<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. When it comes to breakfast, I'll skip it. Oh, so you're a breakfast skipper. Say, just listen to this. Nutrition authorities say breakfast should furnish from one quarter to one third of the day's total food requirements. You mean folks should eat a good breakfast? That's right. And lots of folks should eat a better breakfast. Eat a cereal. You can't go wrong if you eat plenty of cereal, fruit, milk, bread, and butter. So tomorrow, enjoy a heaping bowlful of delicious Quaker Puff wheat or Quaker Puff rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. It's delicious. What's more, for added health benefits, natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron are restored in wheat and rice shot from guns. Yes, and talk about good. Just try them. Thanks, mister. That sounds terrific. Yes, everyone loves to eat Quaker Puff rice and Quaker Puff wheat. Jesse Trent had remained in the mining community known as Big Tree for three years after the death of her husband. She stayed there simply because there was nowhere else to go and earned enough to support herself and her 12-year-old son by baking bread and pies and other things to eat which were sold in the Big Tree restaurant. Hey, Mom, look out the front window. Here come King and Sergeant Preston. Take a good look at that man, Dave. That's the kind of man you want to grow up to be. I'll go and open the door. Now, Dave. <laughs> All right. Hello there, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Dave. How are you? Hello, King. Oh, golly, I'm glad to see you. How do you do, Sergeant Preston? Hello, Mrs. Trent. Come on in, Sergeant. Golly, you're just in time for dinner, oh? isn't he, Mom? Well, I uh, would be pleased to have you. I'll step in for just a moment. I have a letter for you. You better wait outside, King. No such thing. Why, he's just as welcome in this house as anyone. Come on in, King. All right, then, Sergeant. Come on. Hello there, King. Hello, old fella. Gee, you're a dandy dog. You, you say you have a letter for me? Yes, it's from the States. Maybe it's from Uncle Harry. There you are. What? Oh, it is from Harry Trent. He's my brother-in-law. Uh, Sergeant Preston, will you excuse me? Go ahead, Mrs. Trent. I can't imagine why he'd be writing to me. I, I haven't heard from him since before... It, well, since before my husband was killed, uh, oh, I hope it's not bad news. Oh, uh, you dropped something. I'll get it. Oh. There you are. What? Oh, it's a mess. Sergeant Preston, look, it, it was drawn by David. Your husband? Yes. Here's his name on it. Hmm. I had better see what the letter says. King, better lie down, boy. You're a little big to romp around. Lie down now. Yeah, that's better. Sergeant Preston. Yes? What? I don't know what to believe. Listen to this. Let me read this letter to you. Very well. Uh, you may remember a pair of mittens sent to me as a Christmas gift by your husband. Shortly after that Christmas, David perished in a landslide. I saved the mittens, but had no occasion to wear them until just recently. When I put them on, I found in one of them a map, on the back of which was written a brief message. After these years of delay, I shall act in accordance with my brother's wishes. By the time you read this, I shall be on my way to join you. It is hardly necessary for me to say that you must exercise extreme caution. Say nothing to anyone about the map. Mom, is Uncle Harry coming here? Yes, David. Oh, golly, that'll be great. Oh, gee, I'll be glad to see him. He's the only relative we have. Hush, dear. You, uh, son, will you go to the kitchen and shake down the fire? Sure thing. Stay here, King. Here, Sergeant Preston. Here's the message on the back of the map. It's written by my husband. 
You read it, please. I'm so nervous. All right, I... I'll read it. Dear Harry, I have a secret which I dare not share even with Jesse. This place is full of crooks of every type. I have found one of the richest gold deposits in this part of the country, and I shall tell no one about it until I've staked my claim. I anticipate no difficulty, but one can never be sure of what the future holds. I am therefore sending you this map showing how to reach my El Dorado. Join me at the earliest possible moment so we may work this claim together. Affectionately, your brother David. You knew nothing about this? No. My husband set out on what I thought was just another prospecting trip. Soon after he'd sent the Christmas package to the States, he never returned. I see. Oh, dear, now I am worried. With this map Why, in the house... there's I... nothing to worry about, Mrs. Trent. No one suspects that your husband found gold. No. <laughs> oh, I'm so confused. I don't know what to think. It seems to me I had an invitation to have dinner with you. Oh, oh please do stay, Sergeant Preston. I, I want to talk to you now that... Well, there's so much to talk about. I'll go get it on the table right away. Perhaps I can help. Oh, it's almost ready. It was on the stove when you came. Well, perhaps I can bring in some wood. Where has Davy gone? Davy! Davy, where are you? Oh, dear, where is that boy? Davy had left the house by way of the kitchen door and had hurried to the restaurant of his mother's best friend, Kate Carlson. He was bubbling over with excitement. Miss Carlson, Miss Carlson. Alive, Davy. What's the matter? Why, you've come out without a hat or coat. Is something wrong at home? Is your mother sick? No, ma'am. I came to tell you the good news. Good news? We're going to be rich. We've got a gold claim. You, <laughs> you have? My mind, that's just wonderful. Dad found it. What's that, Davy? Your... Your dad found it? Yes, ma'am. But me and Mom didn't know it until just the day when we had a letter from Uncle Harry. Dad sent him the map in a pair of mittens, but he didn't find it until just now. Sergeant Preston brought it with the mail. Uh, Uncle Harry sent the map, and now he's coming here. David. We didn't know any... You better come with me, David. You'll have to wait until I return, Mr. Snodgrass. Ouch. Hey, Miss Carlson, you're hurting my hand. Come with me, David. Oh, but, but you needn't drag you me. Come with me. Miss Carson, where are you taking home? And I wish to goodness you'd have stayed there. Don't you know you shouldn't go around telling everyone your personal affairs? I can't imagine where the boy's gone, Sergeant. He didn't even stop to shake down the stove. Your wood box is low. He may have gone for firewood. I'll find out. But, but there he is now. And Kate Carlson's with him. Sure enough. Oh, dear, in spite of all I said, he went out again without a hat or a coat. <laughs> Hello, Kate. Hello, yourself. Oh, you better keep this boy locked up. What? Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Kate. Oh, what's the matter? Mommy, I didn't do anything. If I had a map to a gold claim, I'd what? try to keep it a secret. What? What do you mean? Oh, you can't blame Davy. He didn't understand the importance of it. Oh, I just wish the restaurant had been empty when he came in shouting your good fortune. Oh, Davy! That's too bad. Who was in the restaurant? Oh, the usual bunch, including some who'd stop at nothing to get hold of a map of a gold claim. Mommy, I... Never mind, Sonny. I, I just wanted Kate to know. Yes, I understand, dear. Uh, we'll have nothing to worry about while Sergeant Preston's in town. Uh, Sergeant, I, I hope you can stay in town till Harry arrives. I wish I could. Uh, you can? No, I must be in White Falls tomorrow. I have some business there. Oh, I see. In view of what's happened, I don't like to leave you without protection. Mrs. Trent, I'm going to leave King here with you. I'll return as soon as possible, and I'll stay in Big Tree until your brother-in-law arrives. King didn't want to remain behind, but after Sergeant Preston had left, the great dog sensed his responsibility. That night, he curled up in the snow outside the front door of the small Trent house. And that night, a man named Snodgrass met with two men in his home. Yo, I'd handle this myself if it weren't for the fact that I was at the restaurant when the Trent boy came in. You wouldn't have heard about the map of the gold claim if you hadn't been there. That's right, Joe. But the very fact that I was there would make me a suspect. That's why I must have an alibi for tonight. So you want me and Red to go and steal the map? Is that it? Yes. What's in it for us? Well, there may be a few other assignments, Red. Assignments you and Joe will have to carry out. You follow my instructions and we'll make it a 50-50 split. 50-50? You mean you take half and we split the other half? That's what I mean. 
Why not a third to each of us? You heard the proposition. Take it or leave it. We'll take it. <laughs> then get going. Mrs. Trent and the boy will no doubt be asleep. Now, if you're careful, you may not have to wake them. I don't want any violence if it can be avoided. Is that clear? Yeah, that's clear. All right, I'll go over to the cafe and provide myself with an alibi. When you're through, go there. We'll meet in the back room. Okay, Snodgrass. Come on, Red. Joe and Red made their way through the moonlit night toward the small house at the edge of town. They didn't see King in the shadows of the doorway. They were just ten feet away when they heard a growl of warning. Joe, hold on a minute. There's a dog by the door. I didn't know Mrs. Trent had a watchdog. Hey, look how he stands there watching us. I don't like this, Red. I King like caught the scent of fear, and his keen instinct no told him that the men who had stopped a few like feet us. back were not on a friendly you mission. You know what Snodgrass said about violence. Joe, get your gun out. We can't shoot. We'll bring the whole town here. No, don't shoot. Use a gun as a club. Crack that dog on the head. Come on. When King saw the guns appear, he charged. Red, look out. Get him, hit him, get him away from me. I'm trying to. I can't get close. Get get out. Out. Look out, he's going for you. Pull him off. Get him. Get... Leaping, charging, ducking, King kept both men busy until the struggle roused the woman inside the house. She hurried to the door with Davy at her heels. Get this dog off. Call him back. Get down. Get you. him away from us. Get down, King. Give me a boy. Give me a boy. Yeah, that's better. You got no right keeping a vicious cur like that. He's not a vicious cur. And why do you attack us when we're walking past and minding our own business? You'll hear from us. You just wait. You'll hear plenty. Come on, Joe. Let's get going. All right. A few minutes later, Joe and Red reported to Snodgrass in the back room of the cafe. So you didn't get the map? We didn't even get to the house. Yeah. Something must be done about that dog. In the morning, we'll visit Jesse Trent with the constable. I'm sure there'll be no dog to interfere with you tomorrow night. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Man, oh man, here's a breakfast treat. It's got them all beat. It's Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. These famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals are shot from guns. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are choice premium wheat or rice grains shot from guns. They're giant size, king size, colossal. They're actually exploded up, up, up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Yes, wheat or rice shot from guns are crisp and tender as nuts in November. Shot through and through with swell nut-like flavor, too. What's more, Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice are nourishing. Yes, both delicious kinds furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. They're quick and easy to fix for breakfast, lunch, or supper, or after-school snack. Just pour them out from those big Quaker red and blue packages. Add milk or cream, top with your favorite fruit. And there you have it, a nutritious, economical, deluxe taste treat. Buy both delicious kinds. For variety, eat Quaker puffed wheat one time, Quaker puffed rice the next. Just remember, they're never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original, crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always look for the smiling Quaker man on the front of each big red and blue package. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. They're shot from guns. Now to continue our story. On the morning after King had thwarted an attempt to steal a map from Mrs. Trent's house, Dave was looking out the window. He saw four men approaching. Mom, it's the constable and Mr. Snodgrass and, and two other men. Oh, dear. Dave, you'd better take King into the next room. We don't want a repetition of last night. Come on, King. This way, boy. I'll, I'll stay with you. Come on, here. Morning, Miss Trent. Uh, you must have seen us coming. Yes, Constable, I did. How do you do, Mr. Snodgrass? Good morning. I think you know these gentlemen. Red Bates and Joe Teal. I'm sorry, but I, I don't remember meeting them. Uh, won't you come in? You're 
dog attacked us last night. Oh. It was an unprovoked attack. Joe and Red were walking past your house, minding their own business, when that vicious cur went after them. I can't believe King would do anything like that. And furthermore, he's not my dog. He was left here by Sergeant Preston. You mean to say it's Sergeant Preston's dog? Yes. Gosh, Mr. Snodgrass, that sort of changes... It changes nothing. The fact remains that my clients were attacked by that dog. This woman is guilty of negligence by permitting the dog to be at large. My clients will certainly sue her for damages. No, Mr. Snodgrass... Aside from that, Constable, you have a court order. But, Mr. Snodgrass, when the judge issued that order, he didn't know that the dog in the case belonged to Sergeant Preston. The order describes the dog as the one in the care and keeping of Jesse Trent. I don't care whether the animal belongs to Mrs. Trent or Sergeant Preston or anyone else. You ought to take it into custody. Keep him fine. Oh, but the judge didn't hear my side. He... Well, he figures no harm will be done by locking the dog up until he can look into the situation, Mr. Trent. But, Mr. Snodgrass, uh, Sergeant Preston's going to be downright provoked. You he... have no choice in the matter, Constable. It's your duty to carry out the order of the court. But you can't take King away from here. You can't. Mrs. Trent, I'm sorry, but it looks like I got no choice. Here's the paper signed by the judge himself. Where is the dog? Is the dog in back there, Mrs. Trent? Yes. He's back in the other room with Dave. I'll go get him. There's a chain back there. I'll show you. You'd better fasten it to his harness. That's the right spirit, Mrs. Trent. There's no use of you trying to fight against a court order. I promise you that the dog will be well taken care of. I'll see to that myself. Dave, we'll have to... I don't see the dog. Where is the dog? Where is it, I say? What's this on the yeah. door? Looks like a note. What is it, Constable? It's for you, ma'am. From your son. What, what does he say? Where is he? Where's the dog? He's, he's gone away. He went out the back door and took King with him, so King couldn't be taken away by the law. Dave! David! Dave, where are you? I guess he's out of hearing. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Oh, Constable, you got to find him. Find him, I tell you. He's too small to be out in that wilderness alone. He'll be lost. Oh, you got to find him. you got to find my boy. <laughs> Darkness closed in early in the day. And the rising wind brought snow. Late afternoon found Davy breasting the wind, with King walking obediently at his side on the end of a chain. The boy was tired but he kept on toward the community of White Falls. I, I wish I knew how much further to, to White Falls. We, we've got to get a Sergeant Preston King. We, we've got to do it. King kept his eyes on Davy during the next half hour. The great dog knew that the boy was close to exhaustion. When Dave spoke, his voice was thin and broken. And... Got to keep going. Got to find Sergeant Preston. Got to find him. In the meantime, a number of townsmen had been out searching for the missing boy. Group after group returned to Big Tree and reported that new snow had blotted out all tracks. Snodgrass was pleased with these reports. <laughs> we have nothing to worry about, boys. The dog is gone. Just the same, Mr. Snodgrass. I'd feel safer if the critter had been locked up by the constable. Me too. What's the difference? As long as he won't be around to interfere with you walk. If he was locked up, we'd know where he is. We wouldn't have to be concerned about his coming back to the Trent house. Don't worry about that, Red. Now go on over to the Trent house and get that map. In. Let's wait a while. For what? Some of the men are still searching for the boy and the dog. Let's wait till they're all back. Joe's right. Besides, Kate Carlson is with Jesse Trent. Let's wait till she's gone. It'll be safer if Mrs. Trent's alone. Hey, I don't like delays. There'll be nothing lost by waiting a few hours. If we wait till midnight or so, Mrs. Trent may be asleep. Hardly. If his son is lost... We'll wait anyhow. Hey, Joe? Yeah. Very well, suit yourself. Davy Trent was cold, tired, and hungry. He had been moving mechanically and wandering aimlessly in the dark Arctic wilderness. When King knew that the boy was hopelessly lost, the great dog took charge. He went ahead, leading the way, with Dave clutching the end of the chain, following blindly. King knew he must take care of Davy. Instinct told him to go on toward Sergeant Preston rather than to turn back to Big Tree. When Dave's numbed hand could no longer hold the chain, the great dog pushed and nudged the boy forward, trying desperately to keep him moving. Progress was painfully slow. Then Dave fell face down in the snow. Here was a new problem for King. 
Should he lie down next to the boy and supply heat from his own great body to ward off death by freezing, or should he go for help? After a moment of indecision, King took a firm grip on Dave's pocket, then hauled the boy to the base of an overhanging cliff where there was a measure of protection from the driving wind. Unhampered, then, King raced ahead. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston had camped for the night. The Mountie had started back from White Falls and traveled far that day when overtaken by a heavy snowfall. He had stopped in a cave. It was warm and snug beside his fire. His dogs were curled up in the snow beside the sled outside the cave. Preston was almost asleep when he was roused by his dogs. What's the matter with those dogs? Never have a look outside. Now then, fellas, what's the trouble? Hard to see into that storm after the firelight. What's the matter, boys? That's the son of a wolf. Bobby stepped back into the cave and got his gun. Then he stood in readiness. Presently, he saw a dark figure against the snow. It was coming on the run. Doesn't act like a wolf. But it's King. King! King, boy, what are you doing here? What is it, fella? Why'd you leave Big Tree? Here, now, steady. Let go. Stop pulling like that. A chain. What are you trying to tell me, King? Want me to go with you? That it? Well, you stay here with the rest of us till morning. Then I'll start out. Come on, King. I have some food inside the cave. Hold him back, eh? King knew that food and rest were waiting inside the cave. But he had to make his master understand that these were unimportant. A much more urgent matter was at hand. Come on now. He pulled back when the Mountie tried to pull him into the cave. And then he grabbed his pocket and tugged. Then, while Sergeant Preston watched, King scurried among the sled dogs, crowding them into position, looking at his master as if to say, Hitch up! All right, King, I'll take your word. It's urgent. We'll hitch up right away and shove on. Midnight found Jesse Trent red-eyed and sick with worry. Kate Carlson was with Dave's mother in the small house. Oh, Jesse, you mustn't give up hope. Oh, but, Kate, Dave is such a little fella. And this, this storm, if he'd been anywhere near, one of the men would have found him. They've given up. Don't you know what that means, Kate? They've given up search for me. Now, now, Jesse, they start searching again in the morning. Remember, Davy's not alone. But that dog, that dog was with him. He never would have left if it hadn't been for King. Now, listen, honey. If I was to be out in this wilderness, I'd rather be guarded by King than any three men in town. Why, well, that dog's an old campaigner. Oh, here now, you, you drink this warm tea. It'll settle your nerves. I'm going to stay here for the night, and I'm going to see that you get some rest. Now, you just drink your tea and lie down. Rest? There'll be no rest as long as my boy is gone. Drink your tea. Come on. Oh, someone's at the door. Maybe it's word of Davy. Back inside and keep quiet. What's this mean? Who are you two galoots? We wanted you to know we wouldn't have our faces covered with bandanas. You put down those guns, you tin horn rats. This is a fine time to come here waving guns at the boy's mother. We didn't pick the time. What do you want? <laughs> oh, nothing much, Mrs. Trent. All we want is a hunk of paper you got by mail. <gasps> a map. Yeah. A dead man's map. <gasps> so that's it. How'd you rats know about that? <laughs> we got ways of knowing things. Oh, Kate. Kate, you told me Dave was talking too much. <laughs> it doesn't matter now. To think I scolded him for it. <laughs> I'd give a hundred maps to have it back. <laughs> Say, you two must have been in my restaurant when the boy was talking. You said enough, now shut you up. You try to shut me up. I can do that, Watch too. Let me go. Watch her. I'll see about the map. Where is it? You, oh, you beast. Let go of me. Stop right now. I'll let you have it with my gun barrel. No, come on. Don't hurt Kate. Where's that map? Hand it over, quick. I'll get it. I'll get it for you. I hear dogs. They're stopping outside. Hey, you two women, get over there. Over against the wall. Come on, <laughs> quick about it. We'll see who's coming. Whoever it is, we'll cover him and hold him here till we're clear. You tell him to come in. Help! Help! I want you. Pull it! Hit it! One of the crooks fired at Sergeant Preston, but he fired too fast. Shoot, Joe! Acting on the split-second warning, the Mountie dropped low as he drew his gun. That dog, look out! Keep him away! Get him, King identified the scent of men he had learned to hate. He charged before his master could fire. He leaped at Red, knocking him off balance, then turned his attention to Joe. In the meantime, Sergeant Preston closed in. This is for you. 
Kate grab the pot of scalding tea. Try it there, you skunk. Oh, oh, That's enough, no. Kate. Unking, on guard, boy. We'll see who's behind these handkerchiefs. So it's you, Angel. I'm scalded. I'm scalded. And that dog... will not hurt you if you don't move. Who's your partner? Now oh, listen, Sergeant Preston, listen to me. Well, Red, you dodged the law a long time. I guess this is the end of your trail. They came to steal that map, Sergeant Preston. Snodgrass, Samus, it was his idea. He made us do it. Oh, wait a minute. Listen here, Sergeant, that's King. Where'd you find him? King found me. He made me hitch up my team, and he led me to Dave. Oh, Dave! He's all right. He's on my sled. Oh, oh my boy! Oh, my my boy. Sergeant, is he really all right? Dead tired. He's sleeping, but he's all right, Kate. Oh. I don't know what he was doing on the trail with King. It's all clear now. These crooks came last night to try to steal that map, but huh? King chased them away. The whole thing was Snodgrass's idea. Yes, Snodgrass came with a court order. He wanted to get King out of the way. Well, Dave slipped out the back door with your dog so the law couldn't touch him. Good for Dave. Oh, Sergeant Preston, he is all right, I'm sure of it. He was as warm as toast beneath those robes on your sled. Mom, Sergeant Preston brought me home. Yes, dear. Sergeant Preston and King brought you home. We'll tie these two, King. Then we'll go get Snodgrass. Well, <laughs> look at that dog. Oh, he's wagging his tail. He sure looks happy. Yes, Kate. He knows the case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Ask Mother. She knows. Yes, Mother knows that quality comes first in a food. That's why Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice are made from only the premium grains of wheat or rice. What's more, Mother likes the fact that wheat or rice shot from guns makes an easy-to-fix economical deluxe family breakfast with milk or cream and fruit. For added health benefits... Natural grade amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron are restored in Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Buy both delicious kinds tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the knife throwers. Charlotte Brown and her husband Sam were knife throwers. They were good friends of mine, and I couldn't believe either one guilty of murder. You see, I had put Jack Barlow in jail for the night to keep him out of trouble not realizing that I was playing right into the hands of his mysterious killer. Even King was stymied in this adventure. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. Boys and girls, does your dog like to play? Is he a good watchdog? Well, if you want to keep him happy and healthy, then have Mom feed him kennel ration, because kennel ration is made with lean red meat. Choice cuts of U.S. government-inspected horse meat. And it's packed with vital minerals and vitamins dogs need daily. Have Mom get three cans at her favorite dealer today. Look for the blue and yellow can. Kennel ration. First in canned dog food. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.